Today we're going to be making some cute pendants and we're going to be using supplies that you would normally have for your acrylic nails or small craft projects. Be using nail glue, cardstock or cardboard and the possibilities are endless on the designs that you want to make. Here's just a couple for you to take a look at. These can be used for Mother's Day, Christmas, birthdays, and they add a little something extra because it's all based on something that you created by hand. Hi, today we're going to make some pendants that are inexpensive but really cute, and they're going to be one of a kind because you're the one creating them. You can also use glitter, uh, holographic pieces. Uh, these things are called, they look like little beads to me, but they call them caviar. Uh, you can use that. And a variety of other things. The way that you're going to apply this is you're just going to simply use clear drying nail glue. And you're going to make sure that it says that it's uh, that it doesn't yellow. Sort of like when you do your top coat on your nails, that's what the effect you're going for. And then you're going to use either a cardstock, or since I'm in the jewelry industry, whenever they have uh, a discontinued item, uh, especially in their uh, packaging or um, an overstock, I always take advantage of those sales, obviously. And so, what I've done is I've cut this. Don't worry that it's two different um, colors because you're going to cover it. It's not a big deal. Or you can, you know, paint your pieces, your pendant pieces, before you even get started. That's up to you as well. Okay, so what I've done is I have cut my piece. And what I'm going to use is some pinking uh, shears uh, just to make a, a uniform interesting design for my pendant. Make sure that you do have an area that's uh, wide enough for you to put your little uh, jump ring in. Okay, so I've got my piece. All you simply do is you put, use your glue, put a layer of glue on one side where you're going to start. Use the same brush applicator or you can use a separate one and pick up your pieces. See? Now I suggest using a different brush applicator and uh, only if you are dealing with like some dark colors that can bleed so that way, you know, when you go to use this again on your own nails, you don't have a mess or, you know, it stains it a different color when you're trying to paint your nails clear or something. Okay. And you kind of let that dry for a second. Let it, you know, blow on it if you want, whatever. Or just set it aside for a second and work on the, extra, the next side. Say, so can you... See? Okay. Now, say for example, I have, well, actually it's not even an example. I have, my watermelon is covering my white fruit thing here. So you can use the tip of your nail and you can just move it. Don't be afraid to use your nails because since it, you know, this stuff is for your nails, it'll work fine. Okay, after that dries, you can put, you'll put a second layer of glue. If, for example, you have a spot where this is going to, your uh, embellishment is going to hang off of, you can use a simple cutter like this one here. I believe it's like four or five dollars and it comes with some blades with it. And you can cut your fruit. There we go and it's cut in half. Okay, So you can use, you can cut it in whatever size you need to fit the little uh, crevices that you want. 
Also, if you want, say, one section to be glitter or a certain color of glitter or those little caviar things, you can put your little uh, glue spot in that section that you want and then have your glitter on the parchment that you're using to do your craft work on so you don't make a mess and dip it in there to sh uh, turn it to the side. So I've placed my glue there right there and I want to have glitter so I'm gonna dip it in there gently because uh, the embellishments I just worked on aren't quite dry enough for me to be doing this and then look you've got this real pretty uh, orangey glitter uh, adding your rhinestones is exactly the same as adding the decoration. It's not some special concept that you have to learn. You just pick it up with the applicator and place it wherever you want. And remember using the tip of your nail or the brush will allow you to move your embellishments around very easily. I'm going to let this dry and I will show you how to complete your pendant. Alright, so our pendants have been made. The top side has been done. Uh, it's dried. What I went ahead and did was added a little bit of glitter and I did a clear coat with uh, the clear gloss that's in uh, the spray can. Now that's optional, but I've found that it lasts a little bit longer and you barely put a light coat over it. Okay, so these are dry. Now we haven't done the back yet, but I am going to show you uh, two different ways that you can um, turn this into an actual pendant. Okay, usually what you would do is you would wait till the other side was done and then you would um, do this step. And I'm going to use a jump ring and let's see if I can spread this out a bit so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and use a big jump ring and the only reason why I'm doing that is because I want you to be able to see it real clearly. Um, normally I'd use a smaller size one. Um, if you need any of these jewelry style supplies, I do have a section called findings on my eBid site and just look up CJ and Sons with a Z there. Okay, so take your cutter, I'm sorry I don't know what this is called, um, slicer, cutter, whatever, uh, or if you don't have one of these get a uh, box cutter or the razor blade to it or if you have some small sharp scissors you can even use that. Now pick on your pendant where you want the hole to be. And a uh, little uh, extra tip that I found is that you can go through the embellishment, especially if it's one of these PVC ones, not the rhinestones, but the PVC ones or the rubber ones, and it um, actually keeps the hole from getting bigger after long periods of use. Where you want to put it, make sure it's not too close to the edge because you will make a hole and it won't work for you. But you can repair it by putting another embellishment and putting glue um, and covering that spot up. I've made that mistake several times, so don't worry about that. And put the point in, twist, don't cut, twist it. Okay, because you don't want to make a huge hole. You don't need a huge hole. Okay. And twist, twist, twist. One of the ways that you can find out if you're doing some business here is making sure that it's going through to the other end. See? And there you can see the hole. It's just a little bitty hole. Okay. I usually like to wait 24 hours after both sides are done before I do this step, um, but you can still do it without waiting that long, like if you're in a hurry. Okay, now take your jump ring 
and open it up. I make sure that you get the ones that are partially open because if not you're going to need a soldering iron and all that fun stuff. So just open it up. Find your hole again because I've already lost mine. Haha. -ha. Push it through there. And remember to go gently because you want to make sure that you're not making the jump ring wider than you need to have to because then you've got to put it back together. Push it through and gently push it together. And then you'll take your small um, crimping pliers or just some kind of pliers that you have at your house. Uh, try to make sure that they don't have the, the teeth because it will leave a mark. Your pendant, it's attached. And let's put it on, let's see, let's put it on this chain here. And that's what it looks like on a black rubber cord chain. Um, you can, like I said, uh, you would normally use a smaller jump ring or not one at all. So if you'd like to put this on a ribbon, simply get your ribbon. You can do uh, three eighths. You can do one fourth as well. Uh, I wouldn't go any bigger than five eighths unless you're trying to uh, make a real big bow. And depending on the size of your embellishment. Don't forget that this is going to go around somebody's neck, so you want to double it. So if it's 20 inches around the neck that you want to go, you want 40 inches of ribbon. Necklace. And I will show you what it looks like on one of our mannequins so that you can see how cute that looks. And then you have a little bow at the end. So I'll show that to you. Let me show you this last little bit. Okay, this is without a jump ring. I don't want it too close. Remember, don't go too close to the end because if you do, if you go too close to the end, it's the hole is going to break and then you won't be able to use that spot and you'll have to repair it. Twist, don't cut. Okay, see, so now I have uh, a pretty good size hole. Now what you can do here is you can kind of twist it around a little bit and get out that excess um, board that's in there. Okay, sort of like drilling with your hands, though. And there it is. Now remember, this isn't going to show when you do the other side because you're going to have something covering that. Okay. So now what I do now is I use a dab of that glue again for the inside, and then I poke my hole through again once it starts drying. So I've got my hole here and I'm putting the glue again. And then I don't necessarily need to put the, the glue on my little uh, lemon that I had because it went through that. But you can if you want. So you put a little bit of glue right there and what you're trying to do is have it seep in so it kind of seals that uh, cardboard that's in there, it seals it. So that way, when you're pushing something through it more, you know, repeatedly for you know your chains or your ribbon or whatever, um, it'll be a smooth process and nothing's going to catch. I will give you. I will take a few snapshots and add it to the end of this video. Again, this is a inexpensive way to make a really cute necklace uh, pendant for uh, Mother's Day, Christmas, birthday, any kind of little holiday that you'd like to celebrate and give something special that was handcrafted by you. Here's a few of our finished pieces that we did together in tutorial. The middle one is the one we did and it's got a unique design. We added some flowers and some glitter and some rhinestones and we put that on a sheer, uh, sheer organza ribbon, 3 8 inch. And on this top one here, 
we have fruit on one side and cute flowers on the other and it's embellished with some rhinestones some caviar beads that I showed you in tutorial and a jump ring is uh, what attaches it to the sheer ribbon and then this bottom one here we've used our rubber cord with the sterling silver lobster clasp and this one is more bling orientated and it's got some of that caviar beads on it as well and a touch of glitter if you need any of these findings be sure to visit our eBid page, uh, our eBid site uh, CJ and Sons or you can check out Etsy.com Naomi inspired for uh, some finished pieces as well you can look at our Facebook page to find out about giveaways discount coupon codes, free shipping offers. So if you liked our channel, please subscribe and we thank you so much for viewing. Get your creativity flowing. Mm -hmm.